Oh, oh we're good. Yeah. Um, are you guys ever going to go back to the West Coast? Maybe. Um, yeah, this was... For those who are newer, the first year, 2017, we're a full ship charter. But we wanted to do the land concert, and there's the town of Loretto uh, in the Gulf of California. And it was wonderful. And it's, it's the sort of thing we're like, yeah, it, it, some year it will make sense to do that. Um, not next year, but we'll see. Yeah, it's, and there's, there's a complicated calculus involved with it because it, they have to have the proper size of class ship sailing in that area during our timeline. Um, and also, I, I'll take this opportunity to talk a little bit. You know, how many of you were around for any of our land concerts in the past? They were super fun and all went well for the most part. And even when they were a disaster, they still ended up going great. Hey, come all is well. But as we, as we have mentioned at, at other management Q&As, uh, we, we got very spoiled very early by the Loretto concert. Uh, and each year we realized how, frankly, dumb it was to say, let's throw a one-day Fest, music festival on land that we're never actually there to produce in until the country. day. In a foreign country. In, in the middle of a cruise. In, yes. an out, in an outdoor venue subject to rain. Yes. In a new foreign country every year with different requirements. That none of us are on site for until the morning of the event. Um, and truthfully speaking, the expense got greater and greater and greater for the land concert. Uh, and not like nobody came, but we have the numbers. Fewer people were attending, and the intention for the land concert in, in the beginning was always because we'd moved to a, a larger group that couldn't do anything all together on the ship, people had said it was important to try and have one of those events where everybody could be together again, and that was, it worked that way for Loretto the first year or two, but attendance has gone down for the land concert uh, such that, you know, we have to weigh, like, the, log the, and the logistics are extreme for the land concert as well. You know, working through those logistics and the expense for the number of people who are showing up for it and just the, you know, the, the value of it, not just monetarily, but, but for everyone. As such, one of the things that we are very seriously considering, we're not officially committing to this yet, but for 2023, uh, we are talking about putting a stage out on the back CU pool deck. We've seen how the Blues Cruise in November, when you may have seen us posting about being on a cruise in November, we went on the Blues Cruise for a few days to see how they do it, and it's actually a very interesting setup. It, it produced, it set, there's a lot of opportunities for programming that we don't always take advantage of here for you know, bands and, and sort of louder music. And it's just cool to, to be out on the deck and there's music happening and there's the bar and everybody's hanging out and it's beautiful. And, 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 and so you can throw land scale size events and landscape size acts without being subject to all of the headache and worry of a land concert being subject to one day's weather possibly ruining everything and because we're going to plan it ahead of time it's really cool like we're actually going to be able to plan the itinerary so we can go slower at times like they have a, a concert speed that they can sail at so and that's, have to worry and that's actually part of the reason that the third port is to be announced right now for 2023 is sort of working on the calculus of ports we may or may not be able to get and shorter runs versus longer runs and speed. So that it's, we're not just being coy or, or we haven't just like, oops, we forgot to book a third port. It's, <laughs> it's part of all that. You know, hopefully all the information will be coming soon. But we're actually, you know, we, we know there's some trade-offs also. Part of, if we put a deck on the backstage, one of the things they have to do is they cover that back pool. They, they put a metal frame underneath and they cover it with, you know, a plywood or, or a, a nice kelp, solid, kelp. A solid yeah, with, kelp. <laughs> with a solid wood top so that people can stand safely in that area as well. But um, you know, we're 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 very excited about the possibilities involved with it programming wise. So um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll have some information in our post cruise survey as well regarding that to get a sense of uh, whether you know, people are interested in that as well. But it's certainly it's absolutely something we're interested in, in seeing for the evolution of the cruise. Oh. It does, it is fun. Thank you for saying it sounds fun. That's one vote. <laughs> and 
I just wanted to say that that cruise we went on in November was really fun, and its its full name, if you want to Google it, is the Legendary Rhythm and Blues Cruise. Yes. Recommend it, especially if you enjoy blues music. Most mostly that. Because there's a lot of go if you don't like blues music. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a lot of blues. Yeah.